Sagittarius gang. Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. That's me. My name is Annie, and we're going to read your tarot cards today. Uh, this reading will be geared ever so slightly more towards Sagittarius rising signs, but if you are a Sag Sun, Moon, Venus, you are all welcome to join this reading. I'm happy to have anyone here. I just ask that you come in with an open heart, an open mind, um, and a desire to better yourself. I want you to walk away from this reading feeling motivated, empowered, inspired, um, or just thinking differently about something. That's usually a, a good sign uh, that, that this tarot message is serving you. If you're feeling the opposite, um, or it's just simply not resonating, please feel free to check back at a different date. It just might not be your message this week, or it may make sense later on. You guys know the drill. All right, let's do this. Let's tap into Sagittarius' energy. Remember to like the video, subscribe, and if you want to book a personal, just shoot me an email and uh, we'll get you squared away. For Sagittarius, I hope you guys are doing good. You have a Scorpio coming up in your long-term partnerships. Who's got a Scorpio? <clears throat> I don't know why my eye was drawn to that immediately. I think because it's just such a badass card. <laughs> I also feel like that could be a tattoo someone has out there. I don't know, maybe you have strong Scorpio in your chart, or maybe this is art artwork that you're doing. I don't know, anyway, we're gonna talk about it. Two of Swords, your hands are tied. Uh, this way or that way. It's like you wanna do something, but you can't, and I almost, I could be wrong about this. We're going to dig in deeper. My gut reaction is it's almost like a timid, like, oh, I want to, but I can't. But it's like a cute, it's like a cute thing. Um, certainly, maybe some of you are going through a more difficult, I have to make a decision and it's stressing me out. This almost feels like you want to express something. Like, you know, I'm hearing like verbal gesture. But it's like you want to say something, but you're too timid or you're too shy, which is so not Sagittarian to me. But again, once proving that you can't chalk people up to stereotypes. Usually Sagittarians tend to be kind of, you know, blunt and say what they think and mean and feel or whatever. Maybe not what they feel. But anyway, like there's a message here you feel held back of like expressing something that you want to say. But I actually think it's kind of cute. Like it almost has like a crush or puppy love type thing to it. Anyway, we'll see if that makes sense to anyone. Um, I'm kind of intrigued to discuss this just because it drew my eye instantly. Let me, let me kind of get a map of where we're headed here. <clears throat> A friendship may turn to romance. It, okay, there may be a transition from a cycle of friendship where you guys were of the same thought, of the same, I don't know how to fill in that sentence. I'm hearing it. You're of the same something or other. Um, and yeah, it's like someone extends a gesture for a cycle to continue together, but in a different way than it, than things had been expressed before, more or less, I'm using all these like weird concepts, but it's like the idea of friendship becomes something romantic. Um, possibly in terms of uh, like long-term commitment, I mean, which I know may or may not be what some of my Saggies are interested in right now, but the potential for that to exist is absolutely there. I mean, you have the eclipses with the North Nodes sitting in your house of uh, seventh house partnership, right? Marriage, contracts, things of that sort. It could be on a business level, but I'll be honest, that's not the first thing I got from this. Um, but either way, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. I would say there might be a little bit of fear because this is a big change for you guys. It, it might be something slightly new or different, or you may feel a little bit out of your known territory, but that in itself, in a very Sagittarian way, we can look at it as well. It's going to be an adventure, right? Like, don't let it get you down because I actually think this could be something very beautiful. Um... <clears throat> So how do I say this? <clears throat> There's also the potential, and this, this might be an entirely different group of Sagittarians or unrelated to what I just told you. That message still stands. I could also view this as um, a transition out of something that is a little bit heavy hearted, but the positive, uh, positive idea of it, because it truly is being shown to me as positive, is that you're meant to grow apart or away or in a way where you're allowed to express an individual truth in, in ways that you couldn't in a partnership that you were bound to. Bound to by contract, maybe, you know, again, this could resonate in terms of job stuff, but it doesn't really matter to me. You guys can interpret it for yourselves. A difficult letting go, possibly a bittersweet end, allows you to blossom in a new way that you have yet to experience. 
Um, so I'm not going to lie. There is like a heavy hearted message to this as well. Um, but it, I almost see this as like a, I, I don't know, this is actually a tremendously heavy message to the point where I'm not super comfortable expressing it because I, I don't, this, these are not about instilling fear in you guys, right? But I mean, just to be completely transparent, you know, one interpretation of an ending of a cycle is quite literal someone passing into a different realm, right? Um, and so if you have already experienced that, right, I, d I don't predict death on my channel as ever, ever, ever do I do that. But what I'm saying is if that resonates for you and you're sort of stuck in this, I don't know what to do with my life without this person, um, know that this, this ability to bloom and blossom and grow and thrive in your own life still is very much uh, available to you whenever you choose to take advantage of it. But with that, understandably, there might be a bit of like a mourning period where you feel like you have to disconnect for a little bit for the purpose of, of building up your own mental health, self-care. That's sort of what I mean by that. And I know that's like a very different tone to the first story, but that's, that's the thing about the death card. It's not always literal death. In fact, frequently it's not. Sometimes it's just a Scorpio, right? Like the fact that this came up first and I was excited to read for you, my gut instincts are that that's probably more where the energy is leaning towards, but I can't help but understand that sort of with the visuals of what I'm being shown, there may also be a very somber energy to that message as well. Maybe it's both. Maybe by releasing something that naturally has exited your life, it makes room for beautiful new partnership, especially in terms of friendship. Even if I would encourage you to not look at it uh, as anything but friendship for the sake of friendship. That's great. I would also say there's probably, yeah, there's probably something there that you're not consciously aware of that it could actually turn in like an insanely beautiful direction. Wheel of Fortune to the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles likes to kind of lock it down in terms of let's let's build together. I want stability with you. Um, and I know this may sound a little bit intimidating, but it, it, with the Queen of Coins, it's like I want commitment from you. I want to know what this is. I want uh, and not so much facts and figures. That's more air. But I want I want foundation. I want solidity, uh, as in solid, right? A solid foundation. I mean, this kind of looks like a wedding crown to me. Like, that, that's sort of what I mean. Like, I, I don't want you to get tripped up in the message of loss and mourning. I mean, you guys know all about that, right? A, you're a human being, but Sagittarians, you go through very deep experiences, right? So maybe that's going to resonate for some of you, and maybe for some of you, you're past that stage, and you've already experienced that. I guess what I'm getting to is that there's still a lot more to be discovered, especially about something happening in your friends group where either there was a severing so that you could go off and explore something or someone else, or there's a severing that may come back around or a beautiful gift like you guys provided to each other that like nurtured your roots and allowed you the faith, the confidence, the ability to become your, your truest self, right? And it doesn't mean you have to do it together. I just love this. I think this is really beautiful. I'm getting all emotional, Sagittarius. I don't know. These look like wedding crowns to me. Uh, again, you can choose to say business crowns, whatever, joint, unit, partnership, all, all those terms we can say. And maybe something that initiates this very strong connection of building together. Yeah, you, you have amazing cards. Maybe that didn't come without a little bit of a loss or a little bit of a contemplation of what you were willing to let go of. Anybody still out there? Anybody still with me? <laughs> we're keeping it positive, Sag, I promise. But I mean, I, it's my job to relay the messages as I see them. So I only say that whole thing with the idea of needing to release or let someone go. Um, it may actually help you heal faster by hearing that. That's all I mean by that. All right, let's talk about... Um, you have two of cups showing up in your fourth house, so you guys may be um, spending a lot of time at someone's house who is a romantic prospect. I'm even getting your parents maybe going to like marriage counseling or trying to do something that nurtures the, the love they express to their partner. Your parent might be getting remarried. There's a beautiful loving connection either among your parents. Okay, oh, okay. I'm, uh, there's a couple messages here. There's a revival of feelings and emotions with a parent. Now that could be between you, your mother and father or you know whatever your, the makeup of your family is, father and father, it doesn't matter to me. Or it might be saying you are nurturing the cup of your relationship with one parent but the other is lacking. 
potentially the mother. There might be a very close connection with the mother. And it's like the father connection between you and you, Sagittarius, and your father. Is it like in limbo? That it, your attention, you know, when you have time or when you're ready to, that this requires some sort of transformation. But right now, it's like at a standstill. Uh, maybe because both parties are fighting, right? Mars is sitting in that house. Possibly there's some unresolved tension there. Um, others of you, if this has more to do with the house or the foundation that you're building. Uh, separate from your roots and ancestry of your parents, though I would say they're really all combined. Again, you may be spending a lot of time at a romantic partner's house, especially an earth sign, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn, an earth king for anyone interested in males. Um, again, Taurus Virgo Capricorn doesn't have to be. Um, but do you see how the, the flower is blooming? It's blossoming. It's healthy. That's what I mean. There's like potential here for this to become this. And it, it happens via friends. So whether you end up dating a friend or meeting someone through a friend. Do you see how there, there's some sort of positive connection there? Some of you healing a relationship with a parent. Uh, I don't know if your parent was absent or your parent's parent was ill or wasn't able to take care of you for some reason or, or I don't know, just unresolved tension or baggage. Healing that aspect of your life may actually open up a lot of doors to your um, romantic life. Um, Yeah, and, and just, I mean, basic things I would say, just being able to immerse yourself in relationships and not having to feel like you have to carry on the baggage or the damage that was done, whatever, in, in your childhood or something like that. Oh, God. <laughs> Always with the heavy messages, Sag. Always with the heavy ones. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Refocusing. Yeah, there may be difficult uh, conversations that need to be had about money. You may have had a parent that uh, borrowed money from you or vice versa. You may be carrying around guilt for um, abusing the generosity of a parent, especially in terms of money and finances. I think that's a conversation that will probably come to light, but it, it's, tri it's triggering for one or both people. Like It seems like there are some, some wounds there. So they're never going to get better unless you choose to heal it either with that person or again internally whether maybe that person isn't around anymore to have a conversation with or or they're not interested in reconciling that's fine but you are responsible for healing it so that you're not carrying around that kind of stifled negative toxic energy surrounding that issue or that person um and that's hard right that's where we really have to check our ego um and yeah, just holding on to any resentment. They, what is it they say? It's like swallowing poison and expecting everyone else to suffer. It's like, no, that's in you. That's something you need to <laughs> regurgitate. You got to get it up and out in some way, right? Um, and exercising it from you in a healthy, cathartic way. All right, so let's talk about this full moon. So you have Saturn currently sitting in your third house of communication, um, early education, uh, really your, your perception of the world. It's sort of like the house of your, as opposed to higher mind, like philosophies, concepts, your, not lower mind, but your, your you know, data, details, ideas, figures, very Geminian. They're quick and fast. They're not fully formed and thought out. They're just that kind of thing. Um, so some sort of culmination in that area of your life. It might be with a sibling. Yeah, a sibling may reach out to you with a helping hand or an apology or wanting to make something right. It might be another Sagittarius who does this, some, someone from your early childhood, someone you went to school with, someone who you may have had uh, struggles and opposition with. Someone who you have very differing opinions uh, with. Uh, your, your philosophy of life may differ uh, quite greatly with this person. But you may choose to reconcile or make amends or, or make peace with it in some way or another. Others of you, this is going to resonate more in terms of uh, communication, um, being able to speak quickly and effortlessly, uh, possibly in order to sell yourself. You know, if you're applying to jobs or interviews or uh, whatever, uh, merchandising, marketing, selling yourself, selling your product. You may reach some sort of culmination or finalization of something that has been in flux or pending for a while there. Um, Jupiter has re-entered this house, so Jupiter typically brings with it luck, fortune, uh, money, expansion, growth, uh, a more 
buoyant, optimistic outlook. So because that is your ruling planet, uh, well, for my Sagittarius suns and Sagittarius risings, of course, um, again, that's sort of uh, a lot of matters or situations in your life are really sort of, what is a good word, hampering on, lingering on, th those sort of ideas. Four of Swords, I mean, not a classic depiction of the Four of Swords. Typically, the Four of Swords talks about um, a period of, of rest, resting your mind, very much associated with, like, meditation, like turning off the, the hum and the, you know, the busyness of life. This is, like, resetting, very meditative. I think this is resetting a connection that has been frazzled or... I was getting, like, almost, like, technological terms, like, it's gone haywire, it's frazzled, there's, like, a... A buzz in the communication but it hasn't been it's like you're recharging the energy into that friendship or that sibling relationship or that business connection there's like a, a final truce or something about that uh, is that even the right word I, I don't even know Sagittarius all right what else can I tell you about this it might be a friend you went into business with and it may bring back something from the past, too. A new opportunity, well, a new opportunity. Something that may have happened years ago, you may get invited to participate in that again. Um, there's definitely the seeds. Um, the seeds of potential, I, I guess. <laughs> Uh, in, in new travel opportunities or to uh, explore new territory. Interestingly, though, and this isn't a bad message, you seem to be really comfortable at home, though, right now. It's almost like what's working against you in terms of pursuing some new opportunity is just kind of like I'm kind of just chilling, like I'm just kind of vibing and enjoying it. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all, especially if you're happy and you're healthy doing it. Um, I will say, though, eventually that sort of I'm just chilling and I'm just happy and I like I'm good. I don't need to pursue anything at the moment. That's fine, but eventually that's going to turn into stagnancy when I think the universe is trying to show you some new opportunities that are going to come about. Um, there could be opportunities to travel to see a... Um, I don't know, possibly a family member. I, I, it doesn't really matter who this is. A, an opportunity to travel. Back to, back to the past. Back to the future. I don't know, something about traveling back to the past, and that may be a literal trip you've taken, you know, 10 years ago to fill in the blank. Something about that is coming back around, and I mean, it's probably very likely tied to a very significant person in your life. Look at you, Sagittarius. So you have the Queen of Coins, and you have the King of Coins, and the Ace of Coins. When I say that, what do you think of? <laughs> I see that as like parent and child or collaborators and money. I see that as two combining to form some very strong team. And from that, whether it's via birth or whatever, or, you know, body, they birth something together, right? Maybe this is a, maybe this is quite literal pregnancy. Um, if, if that's the case, I'm almost getting this wacky message of some of you may give birth like in a foreign country or overseas or something that is not native to where you grew up for others of you this this again this could be money or a business opportunity it's a seed so it's not fully like uh, fleshed out yet but there's potential and in order to pursue this it may force you to travel or put a distance in uh, between something that again you're very comfortable in it you're very happy and it's not like a punishment it's not forcing you away from this peace and solace, which that feels really great. Like there's actually really positive messages about connecting with partners um, that, that bring you joy, uh, that bring you a sense of peace of mind. It's comfort. You're not constantly like worrying about, am I catering to them? And do they need this from me? And there's just like, we're good. There's almost like an intuitive understanding here. Uh, very strong partnerships right now. That leads to this ace of coins. Is it pregnancy? Is it a new house? Is it a new travel opportunity? Is it a new business? I don't know. It could be any of those things, but it seems great. I really like it. And that's sort of what I get, too, from this card, too. This is not necessarily bad. It's just a transition of a cycle where, by default, death always indicates 
it's new and it's different, but like there, you may be required to sacrifice something that you no longer need in order to take advantage of this beautiful new opportunity or blessing. And that's really what like aces are in tarot. Typically aces are almost in metaphor, like the hand of God, you know, giving you this, I don't want to say opportunity out of nowhere, but it is a blessing. Sometimes it's not always something we have to work tremendously hard for. It just kind of falls into our lap. I very much associate that with aces specifically. Um, and maybe you've done a lot of work that more or less has, has uh, made you worthy of receiving this gift or this blessing. So best take advantage of it. <laughs> I mean, the sun is sitting in, in your ninth house uh, ruled by Leo in whole sign astrology only. And again, this is if you're Sag rising. But more or less, you may resonate with this anyway, despite your, your birth chart. Uh, with the sun sitting in that house, there's a huge focus. It's like shining a spotlight on mental exploration, foreigners, long distance travel, um, publishing, marketing. Some of you may be writing a book. Some of you may be collaborating with a very significant person in your life on some big work endeavor. Um, I would still offer, it's going to require you to travel eventually. Maybe not you know, in the near future, but eventually. And some, and some of you may literally be doing, I, I don't know what this would be, something that requires you to revisit the past. Maybe it's going back to fix, I don't know, chapters in your book. Do you understand what, something about there's, there's travel back into the past. And that makes so much sense just in, in where we're at astrologically. Jupiter is in retrograde. Your ruling planet, Sagittarius, Jupiter, is literally moving backwards, which typically indicates a need to go back and check something that, that was left unfinished or untied, right? Especially with a sibling, especially in something educationally. Maybe you've been lacking that one certificate or certification or one degree, and now you're going back to get it. So that it frees you, right? This whole theme of feeling tied or feeling like a, feeling like you're being split in two, like I want this, but I also want that. There's a decision that has to be made, and, and you got to take action on it. Travel, travel, travel. How many times have I said that in this video? Probably 19,000 times. All right, what else do I need to tell you here? Um, king, king. <clears throat> yeah, writing, speech, education. The pen is mightier than the sword. What do you need to tell? Tell it, tell it, Sagittarius. What do you need to express? What do you need to say? You may be writing out a very long list or a very long letter, or a very long, I'm hearing words like proclamation. You may be journaling your thoughts in preparation for like something big that you're gonna do with whatever you're manifesting. It's almost like it may even help you to turn off the logical side of your brain and really tap into more like intuitive stuff because that's that's sort of the the hatching of this this egg or whatever metaphor you want to use. It, it, it's more intuitive. It's more spiritual. It may defy logic a little bit. What's hidden from you now is the wheel of fortune. So you may not feel like things are headed in a positive direction or you may be feeling stuck or stagnant. That is temporary because when the wheel of fortune arrives, there's inevitable growth. There's inevitable change. So rather than fight it and refuse it, I would say submit to it. Allow your life to be shaken up a little bit. Um, and I almost see this as being, being very precious or sentimental about the phase you're going through currently, at least I would say in, in part of your life. I'm not saying everything is perfect, but there's something about this is so perfect, I just want to preserve it so that it never changes. Almost like a, like a honeymoon stage of a relationship. Well, by default, that chapter is going to end, and it's all about what you make of it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's never going to be the same and it'll never be as good. I would argue it may even be better than you're realizing, but you don't know it yet. Wheel of Fortune in the 12th house. Being with this person may put you at odds with someone else, particularly a family member. Or again, that might go uh, opposite, vice versa. If you have a parent who's dating or getting remarried, you may be feeling slighted about it. And again, the, it, you may not even be consciously aware of it too. It may stem back to like childhood trauma that you haven't fully come to realize yet. I think if that resonates for any of you out there, your best approach is to practice empathy, to practice forgiveness. Um, it's not about condoning what was done to you or, or injustices that you may have suffered. It's about like unloading your own backpack of wounds. It's about not forcing yourself to carry around, again, that, that toxic poison that you're swallowing and hoping it affects the other person. It's not going to have that effect. So 
best to release, best to let go. In that case, best to untie yourself from that baggage as best you can. And don't feel like you have to do it alone. Again, this is like a no judgment zone. There's something very positive for you. Your world may open up, eighth house, by seeking uh, mental health uh, counselors or something like that, right? You never have to fight this battle alone. In fact, this might even be saying, depiction-wise, it's gonna be a longer battle the more you resist working on this wound, right? Look at that picture. That's, that's pretty intense, right? But the road ahead is beautiful. Again, Wheel of Fortune. You just might not be seeing it that way now. And, and it's such a, uh, not a contradictory message because, you know, human beings by default are contradictory sometimes. There's something that you are absolutely elated about right now. I feel like it might be romantic. Um, and you may be leaning into that all the more because it feels so good. But just be careful that that doesn't become a device of escapism to not deal with the stuff that isn't comfortable. Am I right? <laughs> that sounded arrogant. I wish I hadn't have said that. I'm just, I'm trying to offer you, uh, I'm trying to offer you a different per, uh, perspective. It's not saying don't enjoy the good stuff, but the mere fact that I do sense some of you are clinging to it is that so you, that you don't have to deal with other things. Again, this isn't a personal attack. This is just like, hey, did you ever think of it that way? Um, unexpected business opportunities, powerful ones, very powerful ones. <clears throat> You may just be connecting with <coughs> friends. Venus, Venus is going to be moving into Libra. Venus loves to be in Libra. Um, those, those are associated with each other. Harmony, balance, socializing. Um, also money, too. There could be money opportunities with friends. You may be spending a lot of money on your friends or spending a lot of money to be with friends. Maybe you're all going on a big trip or something, right? Um, and, and, you know... Just the idea of, of wanting authentic connections, um, is, is friendships. Don't be afraid to grow apart from friends who've always been a part of your soul tribe. It's not that you're rejecting them. It's just, you again, you may be hindering each other's growth by being so forged together. It, it, I mean, usually freedom is a sign very much associated with Sagittarius. So make sure you don't feel shackled or bound to any relationship in your life. If you love them and there's loyalty there, again, there should be an understanding of, respecting your need to go off and do this or experience that and sometimes you'll do it together and sometimes you won't sometimes those roads will will go off in different directions and that's okay Sagittarius that's what I got for you uh, remember to like the video subscribe to my channel thanks for joining me and I will see you soon for more tarot bye guys